Okay, welcome back to Polymers. I'm going to just talk about some, we're going to go through some case studies of different medical devices that use polymers before I get into the different material types. Um, so catheters have been the most obvious um, application of polymers. We, we see them everywhere. Um, they deliver fluid to the body or they take fluid away. And, and that's one of the main reasons for catheters. They deliver something. So this could be blood or blood products. It could be nutrients, isotonic saline. It could be glucose. It could be medications or it could be a contrast media for angioplasty. And some examples I've given here. So this is a, um, a some sort of a saline tube. Um, this is, is blood tubing during dialysis. A urine bag attached to a urine, urinary catheter. Um, this is uh, one of these Jackson Pratt drains, which um, drains wound fluid away from wounds. So attached to some sort of a catheter tubing um, and into a storage device. Um, so as I said, very, very common. They're the most obvious um, example for, for polymers. So we'll have a quick look at vascular access devices as, as a subtype of catheter. So these are um, devices that act, access the veins and they are typically implanted under the skin, uh, which allows medications to be delivered directly into larger veins. Um, so this would be instead of an IV um, set, um, maybe if you need longer term uh, delivery of medications, you would need a vascular access device. They're less likely to clot than uh, maybe an IV set and they can be left in for long periods. So central venous access devices, um, they're small, uh, they have flexible tubing placed in large veins for people who require frequent access to the bloodstream. So somebody who's on long-term medication. Uh, placement is usually in one of the large veins of the chest or the neck, uh, but it can be in the groin if necessary. And they can remain in place for weeks, months, or even longer. So these central venous access devices, um, Catheters are inserted by tunneling under the skin in either the subclavian vein, which is beneath the collarbone, or into the internal jugular vein located in the neck. And then a port is uh, placed below the skin. Um, so uh, with this port, you can feel a, a, a disc about the size of a quarter, so a, a US quarter, a two pence piece here um, would be about that size. And it's felt underneath the skin i am um, but what can happen here is that uh the the clinician then can either draw blood or deliver medication by putting a tiny tiny needle uh, through the skin and straight into this port so they don't have to go re-accessing your vein every time and um, so it prevents veins collapsing which might happen uh, if they're trying to insert a different iv line a peripherally inserted uh, central catheter then it is inserted into a large vein in the arm and advanced forward into the larger subclavian vein. Okay, so another area where um, venous access devices are, are used is in dialysis. Dialysis is uh, a method to rapidly remove toxins or drugs from the blood, uh, so particularly in patients with uh, kidney disease. Um, and if their kidneys aren't functioning properly, they get a toxic buildup um, in their blood and may need to um, and do need to undergo hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis uh, at regular intervals. So hemodialysis is uh, where the patients um, get hooked up to this venous axis uh, catheter. Blood gets pumped out um, of their veins um, through a dialyzer which filters the blood and it gets pumped back in again um, and it's, it's filtered. Uh, peritoneal dialysis then is where um, a cleansing fluid is administered directly into the stomach. So this isn't a, a venous access um, but it is, it is st there is still an access point into the body. It's pumped directly into the stomach um, where the, the wall of the stomach filters um, any toxic buildup and then the fluid and any waste products get pumped back out again after a few hours. 
Okay, so uh, an enteral feeding tubes are a different type of catheter. So these aren't venous axis in. These are um, trying to get food into the stomach. So another application for catheters. Uh, they can be called gastric feeding tubes. Uh, they're usually inserted into a small incision in the abdomen. So this picture over here is a nasogastric tube. So it's going through the nose and down into the stomach. An enteral feeding tube, usually uh, there has to be made an incision made uh, in the stomach, uh, into the abdomen, and is used for long-term enteral in, in nutrition. Uh, so one type is the percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, which is a peg tube. And this is placed endoscopically. Um, they're suitable for long-term use, but they sometimes need to be replaced. Uh, this gastric tube can be useful where there's difficulty with swallowing because of neurologic or anatomic disorders. So it's another application of catheters. Um, so we, we've talked about different venous access devices, um, dialysis tubing, enteral tubing. The materials used for these are, are pretty much the same. Uh, it's usually PVC. Uh, it could be polyethylene, it could be polypropylene. Um, how it's made is, is plastic extrusion. Uh, there is a move away from PVC products at the moment um, because of concerns um, of the additives such as phthalates. Um, but um, so as I said, alternative plastic materials include combinations of polyethylene, polypropylene and silicon. Um, other processing technologies besides extrusion include bonding and jointing. Uh, joining solvent bonding is very common, radiofrequency welding, ultrasonic welding, etc. And we'll go through those later on in the course. Uh, there are some potential problems with catheters, so there could be incorrect or insufficient flexibility. They need to be flexible enough to get fluids uh, to the part of the body or withdraw blood from the part of the body um, necessary, uh, but they also need to be strong. So strong and flexibility, uh, there's a trade-off. They may need to be um, have a very low coefficient of friction as well. Uh, the chemical composition may be problematic. There may be toxic effects and duration and position of the placement um, is problematic. And this is particularly prevalent in urinary catheters where there's high rates of infection because of how long the catheters are inserted. OK, so that was a quick overview of different types of catheters and their materials. Thank you.